Uh, so hi guys, my name is Ross. Um, I've got the GitHub link to what I'm going to talk about here. Uh, so you just put that in quickly if you want to look at it while I'm doing this talk. So github.com, rjt1990 mantra ml. Um, you may remember me from such things as PyFlux two years ago. And recently with Rob, we made papers with code. So it's like an ML, uh, a site where you can see the latest trending papers. Anyway, I'll get started. Uh, so three problems with deep learning software or repos, whatever you want to call it. One, lack of composability. So we often see on GitHub repos, there's a new model. That's, maybe it's like a YOLO model. Maybe it's like relativistic GAN. You go in there and everything's like kind of lumped together. It's not very composable. Everything's tightly coupled. So you have your model architectures, your data. It's quite actually hard to extract what you want and reuse it for something. So if it's like a new paper, it's like a new, I don't know, loss function or a GAN or something, you have no idea where it is. It's like a 1,000 line piece of code and it's like very tightly coupled together. Point number two, moving artifacts between local GPU instances, S3. So sometimes you do training locally. Sometimes you want to do it in a GPU instance. Sometimes you want to have your data stored in S3. So there's a lot of different artifacts that are moving about. It's quite hard to keep track of things. Um, and that's linked to number three as well. So you want to know what data set version do I use with what model. Um, and these are just three general problems. Um, so I'm going to argue that actually this is all these three things. They may seem, I mean, they're somewhat connected. But I guess on the surface, they also seem disconnected. But I'm going to argue actually they come from the state of machine learning software right now. So it's like in a very nascent state. And it's kind of like where software used to be. Um, so if you've read this classic here from the 90s, you realize a, lot, a similar problem was solved in uh, web apps and other software, which is called like an MVC uh, pattern. So if you think about Django, uh, what they're doing there is that they have a design pattern for doing a web app where you keep your models in one place, views at one, another place, and you have a controller that kind of manages it. And then the idea here is actually philosophically, it's like loosely coupled. It means you can, for example, uh, change a view for the same model. So a view could be like, a, uh, say, like a, a page, and it's going to reference the same underlying data structure in the model. We can easily swap out different components. So it got me thinking, like, could we do something similar for machine learning software? So instead of having like, these massive, big, ugly scripts, you can easily like, just take different components like data and models and swap them out. So if I have like, a new GAN, for example, I shouldn't have to understand the specific way they've done a data processing thing. I should be able to take out the data that they use and put it in, or take out the evaluation metric they use and just put it in. Now, some of this is already solved, I guess, through like, API layers like Keras and stuff. But I just wanted to see if I could do it on a more general uh, level. Uh, so this is the library I'm going to release this week. Um, it's called Mantra, nice fancy logo. Uh, and you can go to on the GitHub repo. If I just exit this guy. Um, so essentially what Mantra is is a bit like, I guess I hate, I hate this kind of phrase, but it's a bit like Django for ML. In a sense, it's imposing this kind of structure on the back end where you have models in one place data one in one place, and they're all kind of neatly packaged up. Um, so I'm just going to show a brief example. You can see on the readme the, the more about the motivation. But essentially, if I just get rid of this guy, um, I have a folder structure, and it's a bit Django-esque. Um, so you might not be able to see that. I'll use this instead. I'll use the GUI. So I have different things, different folders, uh, model, data, task, and so on. Uh, and this represents an underlying project. But obviously, that's quite ugly, even in, in, the, in the GUI and Ubuntu or whatever. So I can bring up a, a UI just to see the state of my project, which I'm going to do now. Uh, my port's already in use, good throwing. Um, and I can see that underlying folder structure. Now I have a visual representation. Um, so here I have some models and I have some data sets. And what I want to show is actually what you see here. You don't have to do a lot of work to get it into this kind of nice visual framework. So if I go into, let's see what I have here, um, a CNN example. Uh, and this is just the folder. Uh, so you can see it's in a folder called DeepCNN. Um, my code here, you won't be able to, be able to quite see it. Um, but essentially, it's just a standard Keras model. Um, but I've put it into a specific folder through the, through the framework. And all I'm doing is adding some uh, little uh, callbacks here. So it's kind of Keras-esque still. And that's going to get you into this framework, which now I'm now going to show you what kind of stuff it can do. Um, so that's a model script. And I also have some data sets here. Um, so I have some image data sets. I have some Premier League data. So if I just show you an example of what you can do for the command line, um, here's one I did earlier. So you can do it programmatically as well for your notebooks. So I can just do easy training for the command line. So here I'm just going to train a uh, logistic regression model and some data. Uh, I've got a task here, which is like the evaluation metrics. I'm using binary cross entropy. I'm going to specify the target and the features and hope this works. Um, and I have to do some training on my local. 
Fortunately, it's log logistic regression, so I don't have to fuck around with GPUs in my local, but there you go. Um, and I've done 200 epics, so it's going to take a while. While it's training, you can use the UI and see what's going on. So I can go to the trials page here. I zoom back out. I can see I'm training a model here. Uh, you don't have to fuck around with TensorBoard. It's all done for you. So if I just load this up, uh, I can see the model that's training, current accuracy and loss. It uh, works with PyTorch too, so it uh, works with all the different frameworks, the TensorBoard sort of thing there. Um, and I'm just going to do a quickly another example. So if I add a new feature, so feature five, and I'm going to do 10 epics so it doesn't take too long. Um, yay, bug. Oh, there we go, yeah. Feature, thank you. The perils of live coding. Um, so that's five epics. And all the trials I can see, I can see it for a nice UI. And they're grouped by the model. So here I can see some trials I've done. And I can compare the different trials. Yay, more errors. <laughs> like I said, it's coming out this week. Um, so I can see uh, the high parameters here, so the target. So I'm just, I've just got like a one or zero, whether the home team won, so sports data set. I can see what features I've used. And basically, from the code level, if you add more hyperparameters, uh, basically it comes up automatically in the UI. So you've added, if you are doing a deep learning model, and let's say you added a dropout parameter, like self dropout equals so on, it automatically appears in the UI. So the fact you package it in a certain way just means you get all these like, cool benefits. Um, and I can also see, if I go on the data, so I, I did it on some Premier League data, I can go to the tasks and I can compare the different models, see if like a Kaggle like leaderboard. So if I, if I just did a new model, I could just run it on the same task or same data and just have like an easy way to compare different things. So that's that. Um, the final thing is, this is on the local. Now I think uh, Nomura is blocking me from SSHing into Amazon, but here's, here's one of the cool things you can do. So if I now do a relativistic GAN and I choose so I've got a data set called DEX, so skateboard graphics. Um, to get it on the cloud, you just simply put uh, a cloud argument, and it does it automatically. Um, so that, what that's going to do is going to move everything to your cloud environment. You just have to configure the API keys. It sets up an environment for you, does the training, and returns everything to S3 in your local. Um, and it looks something like, uh, well, it's not actually that sexy to see it, but essentially, um, just, here's one I did earlier. You just put in the, the details, add the cloud flag, and then essentially it sets up all the cloud stuff for you. You don't have to do any DevOps, uh, hashes the different components, sets it up on in an instance, does the training, returns things for you. Um, so the goal is like if you wanted to set up like 15 GPUs and do distributed training, it would do all the horror hood stuff for you. You don't have to do any of the setup work, it just works whatever backend you want. Um, and again, so for this, everything's configured, so I can see it live doing training. Um, and again, I can see the, the tent support state. So this is a GAN thing I did earlier. And I can see the, the loss I've put in, uh, discriminator and generator. Um, and then everything is stored in S3 and it's returned to my local as well. So I can go and see uh, for this trial some GAN I did. Um, where is it? And I can see, say, the latest iteration, so Epic 61. Here's some shitty skateboard decks that I generated. Needs a bit more training. Uh, the interesting one is, you see the middle one? The, the reason why it's doing that is because it's doing interpolation, interpolation. And the data is actually quite binary. So there's some skateboard decks going up like that, some going like that. And the model thinks that somehow that's a skateboard deck if you combine the two, because it's an interpolation. Anyway, um, so that, that's, that's the essence of it. Um, so it's an early library. We're going to release it this week. Um, but if that sounds interesting, uh, check it out. And yeah, I very much welcome your feedback. Thank you.